Before I get to my prayer remarks, I just want to share something with you. I was reminded that one week ago, I was with um, some of you, Representative Delgado and others, uh, at a summit to root out the scourge that is sexual violence and specifically to address campus sexual assault, for which I am a survivor. And I said that it is a civil right to feel safe in your body. And we can all very easily sort of wrap our minds around why sexual assault is a violent thing. But what is happening to immigrant and refugee communities is also violent. People have a right not only to feel safe in their body, but to feel safe and to be safe in community. It is only another tool of oppression to have communities living in fear. It is violent to separate families. It is violent to decimate entire communities. It is violent to hold the worker and the family hostage in the pursuit of building a monument to hate. It is violent to fan xenophobia with racist rhetoric criminalizing and vilifying immigrants. The best advice that I received at new member orientation as a freshman member of Congress was that in the business of governing and lawmaking, it is very easy to forget the plot. And the plot is the people. And so while the public narrative has been dominated, by a humanitarian crisis happening at the border, we know that the Massachusetts 7 is not exempt from that humanitarian crisis. It is violent and incomprehensible, implausible, the decisions that families are having to make. And for characterizations to be lobbied against those of us who would fight for the dignity, the humanity, and the preservation of families, when did that become a radical notion? To affirm and to lift up the humanity of people, to demand that you see the dignity in them, and to fight for the preservation of families. If that is a radical thing, will I ask all of you to join me in this radical movement? <laughs> Like so many of you brave souls here today. 
I think, patriotism. Patriotism in her selflessness, because she told me in the midst of those negotiations, if they put a compromise on the table for dreamers, I don't want you to accept it if it'll mean one dollar for that hate wall. Because if they are going to guarantee my freedom, but not the freedom of my family and our entire community and that of others, I don't want it. Yeah. Speaker Pelosi often reminds us that our diversity is our strength and our unity is our power. And so as much as my heart breaks that we continue to have to come together, I'm uplifted that we continue to come together because this administration would like to divide us. To pit family against family, community against community, immigrant against immigrant. And whether you are directly impacted or not, the fact that you continue to come together and say no, I want to celebrate that. I celebrate and salute each and every one of you for that. So I want to thank you on this uh, cold, snowy morning where people keep fainting, shocked, and all about. We live in Lincoln. <laughs> this is why we live here. But I want to thank all of you. Um, you could have been anywhere else in the world but here, but the fact that you chose to be here is a testament of your commitment uh, to our greater democracy, to the pursuit of justice, you have inconvenienced yourself. But the pursuit of justice is always inconvenient. And so I thank you for inconveniencing yourself today. I want to extend a special thank you to Mira for organizing this day of action, to the elected officials who stand and join with me in solidarity, who have authored and supported bold legislation to make our communities more safe, more welcoming and whole, Jamie Eldridge, Ruth Balzer, Liz Miranda, I get to call them all by their names because we've known each other for years. I'm so proud to be here with you. And I want to thank the Irish International Immigrant Center, PAIR, HAU, the National TPS Committee, and all the organizations and advocacy groups that do the hard and much needed work of serving our immigrant community. I feel so grateful to be welcomed into this space today. And I want to just offer some simple words before I wrap. You ready? Yes. You belong. Whether you are a dreamer, a TPS holder, or an asylum seeker, your immigration status should not and does not define your humanity. You belong. And you belong here in this building, in these halls, as a citizen activist. Activist leadership in these times is not a choice. It is a moral imperative and mandate. So I thank you for being citizen activists in our shared communities as a valued member, worker, parent, neighbor, and friend. Across our state, too many families are forced to make impossible decisions, decisions that no family should have to make. Decisions like whether or not to drive to work, to pick up their children from school, to risk being pulled over or detained. Decisions like in cases of domestic abuse when victims weigh the cost of calling the authorities and seeking help and pursuing justice that they need and they deserve, or versus calling the authorities and ending up in a detention facility. No person should be forced to live in fear, especially at the hand of government. And again, there is a humanitarian crisis at the border, and there is one brewing in the seventh as well. In Massachusetts, for far too long, the humanity of immigrants has not been prioritized, and that is unacceptable. We have 6,000 Salvadorians and nearly 5,000 Haitians living with temporary status. And let me be clear, there is nothing temporary about the contributions of the people and the lives that they have built here, the families that they have rooted here, and their contributions for decades. Mm -hmm. Your contributions yes. for yes. decades. Yes.